Cool. I can tell you all about SignalFX. It's a real-time streaming analytics solution used for monitoring modern application architectures. So what's unique about SignalFX over all the other monitoring tools you've, you've heard of and all the com monitoring companies I've worked for um, is that it's a purely streaming architecture which enables things like cloud, container, microservices, monitoring, and fast DevOps processes. We can do real-time monitoring off of streaming data, and we can go down to consistently one second resolution. And when we say real-time, that's what we mean. One second consistently, not occasionally. And we get that because of our, because of our architecture, and I'll, and I'll walk you through that in a second. Um, so we're able to monitor um, cloud and on-premise applications all infrastructure, applications, service layer, containers, function as a service, microservices. It's a full monitoring solution, but the emphasis is really on the real-time analytics because the reason why you collect monitoring data is to get actionable information out of it. So what SignalFX focuses on is the real-time analytics streaming. That means you can apply as much analytics to this pipeline as you want to get actionable data without slowing down the, the processing of the, of the metrics. And it's also, we have a very nice UI, easy to use. Um, we have a way of creating your analytics pipelines graphically, and we also have a DSL, uh, domain-specific language, that you can use to make even more advanced operations, or you can also uh, create templates, charts, detectors, like alerts, programmatically. Cool, so before we get into the architecture more, let me show you one of the use cases, of the many use cases I could talk about, um, where SignalFX really shines. And that's in a real-time uh, deployment use case. So what we have here is we call this our CICD uh, demonstration. And I actually have three containers which are live hosted in AWS currently. Each of these containers is processing some document text files, about 1,000 per container per second, you can see right here. So the total service that these three containers are supporting are processing approximately 2,500 to 3,000 documents per second. So the question is, if I want to replace these containers with new code, in other words, update them, can I, would I be able to watch that happen in real time? And more importantly, if something goes wrong, would I be able to auto-remediate within seconds? Because as you use DevOps, more and more, and you increase your velocity and the volume of your releases, not having visibility is, is, I mean, having visibility is critical to maintain your quality. So what I'll do is I will just, um, we have our code sitting in GitHub, I have a Jenkins hosted in AWS, and I'll just go ahead and, and uh, make a change to this code, and we'll watch the whole deployment process live. So here's my little Docker application, and what I'll do is I'll just update one of the files so GitHub can pick up the change. So I will go into this version file. And let's go ahead and just bump up the version number. And this could stand for any change. I just need GitHub to be able to see a delta. Okay, so then we will save this. All right, cool. So now what I need to do is um, commit the change locally, my local GitHub, and then I'll push it up to uh, my hosted GitHub. So, let's see, commit, 533. Okay, so it picked up the file change, and now I'll push it up to our GitHub repository, which is gonna start a pipeline in Jenkins. It will do the build and the testing of these new images, and then when they pass those tests, if they pass those tests, we'll then send it over to Amazon, and actually in this case we're using ECS, but we also can use uh, EKS for the same demonstration. Okay, so now I will push the code. And this is all live, so, okay. So what I'm gonna do is, I will pull, first of all. Make sure I'm in sync. And then I can recommit that change. And let's go ahead and do the push. Cool, so it sees that it picked up some changes. So let's take a peek at our hosted Jenkins instance to see this build pipeline 
happening automatically, because this is actually real live code being deployed into production, replacing those containers that are already in, in production. So I see I have my build and my testing going on here. So let's go back to our real-time dashboard and signal effects. So you see right here that we are monitoring metrics from these three containers live. And as soon as um, GitHub reports that it got a new code change, we'll be able to see a event superimposed on the real-time charts. So here it is right here. So this is a event that streamed into signal effects from GitHub saying, hey, I received a new code push. And then here's another event, and this one we're getting from Jenkins. So it says, hey, we, we received the code, we built it, it built successfully. So the next thing you should see is three new containers spinning up in Amazon Live. Now the way we're gonna do this is we're going to run the new containers for a little while, make sure there's no performance regressions, make sure there's no exceptions being thrown, and then when we're, when we're sure of that, we'll spin down the old containers and we'll be left with a new code running, okay? So you see a couple things. Here's my uh, new container spinning up. I have the container IDs in the exact time that my container spinned up. Also notice that we were able to detect the new containers immediately, within seconds, which is critical because a lot of other monitoring tools I used, you could be waiting a couple minutes for it to even recognize that there's something changed in the production. In the meantime, something could happen like performance regression. So, and also you see that when uh, the, the, the old container spun down, uh, we detect that immediately also. So here we have the three old containers, one, two, three, and the three new containers, one, two, three. Now notice I didn't have to update my monitoring config. I didn't have to tell it what the new container IDs were. Because what it did is the way we handle the metadata, I told this chart to subscribe to all the metric time series coming in. And when it finds um, metrics from a container which is supporting this service, pull it into this chart and apply the analytics in that chart. So that means that as you scale up and scale down in Amazon, you don't have to continually change your monitoring. You don't have to keep, have your monitoring keep up. It will automatically detect new uh, items that are running in Amazon. Claire? So um, let, me, let me say how, show you how we actually did that, just real briefly about our architecture. When you look at a chart, the right side of the chart, that's the real-time part. That's the part that's really important to have up to date. The rest of the chart is, is historical data. So the way we do this is instead of having a time series database where data goes at rest after it's collected before it hits the chart, we actually have a streaming pipeline across an entire architecture. We ingest metrics from various sources, on-prem or cloud, and then we can also handle the metadata very efficiently, so you can have as much metadata as you want. And we, we do dynamic lag adjustment because we're not assuming that all your metrics are coming from the same place. And we, instead of a time series database, we have a data router because now your charts, your automation rules, and your alerts can all subscribe to the data router. So as data flows through in real time, it gets sent to the right place. That's how your charts can, there's no latency step here of doing a query. Like, like most monitoring architectures. So that means you can be guaranteed that you'll have one second resolution if you need that, or if you're doing like one minute or, or 30 seconds, we also do different resolutions. But you're pretty much guaranteed that even when you apply all the analytics, it still, it still comes out at line rate. A couple other um, uh, dashboards I'd like to show you is our, we have a complete um, out of the box coverage of all the Kubernetes clusters, nodes, um, pods and operations. So you can tell things like container restarts, um, health of your pods. And then even for drill down, so besides auto discovering containers, we can also, like here's a, here's a small, smaller Kubernetes environment. I can actually drill into a node and I can auto detect what's running on that node. So like for instance, I see there's Apache web server here and I can then drill down into the web server dashboard or just see the health of that container itself, all from a drill down from an infrastructure view. As far as integrations go, a lot of times we're asked like, what are all the, what are all the um, things that we integrate with? Well, it's a, it's a pretty complete suite, including um, all of Amazon CloudWatch metrics, plus uh, other metrics from many different technologies, and all these technologies, when you 
deploy uh, open source agent. Um, we actually have, um, you can click through any of these and it shows best practice dashboards which are generated out of the box and when we detect a certain technology. Great. Okay, and the other thing that we do, because um, um, uh, EKS is architected in a way where it's easy to migrate from standalone Kubernetes environments into EKS, we actually can put, also put up a uh, before and after dashboard. So as you're doing the migration, we can help with the visibility for, let's say, on-prem Kubernetes cluster to EKS. And you can actually see and make sure there's no performance regressions as you're doing the migration. Great, that's all I had. Welcome. Thank you. Um, go ahead. So I was wondering, uh, you know, we install the agent, we ship metrics. Uh, is there ever going to be a point where we might be able to host SignalFX on Kubernetes? Is that, is that a, a possibility? So the SignalFX, the server side, the streaming pipeline that I showed you, um, that's hosted. It's monitoring as a service. So all you have in your data center is a way of collecting the metrics. And because we're focusing more on the analytics, we're fairly agnostic of how you collect the metrics. We use open source technologies like CollectD. We have a wrapper that does auto discovery. But anywhere your metrics live, whether it's log files, whether it's um, just an API that we can ping, we can pull the metrics in, we do the, the, the lag adjustment so they all stand in line, and then we can ingest them into our, into our pipeline. I've heard that it's difficult to build uh, you know, intelligence around deployments. Uh, does SignalFX help with, you know, understanding the success or failure of deployments? Yeah, absolutely. And that's why I showed the uh, CICD uh, demonstration. Because as you speed up DevOps and as you launch more and more things in production more often, it's more important to have that visibility and the, the ability to consistently see live deployments. So that's something that a lot of people that I showed this to have never seen before. And you can imagine, instead of being notified now, you can actually have auto remediation. You can roll back those containers mm -hmm. within seconds mm -hmm. because that's the sort of speed that we can detect problems in, in production. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you. Guys. Thank you.